At this time, as we're going to move into worship, I would just invite you to, uh, to pray that prayer. God, what do you want to do through me? If you're a guest here, if this is your first time here, I'm Pastor Dave. I'm so glad that you're joining us uh, on this Sunday morning. And we have ministry every day of the week. And so on your chairs, there's a, uh, a program or a bulletin around that you can look at. Or if you go to journeyman.org, you can look on there and you can see what we're doing in our community, as Miss um, Holly talked about. As we continue in with, with worship, we have an offering tube in this room. If you want to give, you can give into there, or you can go to journeyman.org, and you can give on the, two, or, uh, on the, uh, the generosity tab there on, online. Would you pray with me? And let's continue to worship. Father, again, we just thank you so much for who you are. Lord, you are good. Lord, it's so amazing to see the kids who have accepted you as their personal Savior. God, it's so good to see the purple shirts, the purple people that we're serving this week and the others that were behind the scenes and the security and the registration team. Father, it was so good to see how you worked. Wow. Father, we know there's still people that are hurting. There's still people that are financially stressed. There's people that are physically hurting, mentally exhausted. Father, there's relationships that are hurting. And so, Father, again, I just ask, I just ask the power of the Holy Spirit that you will speak to us today and for the days to come. Help us to understand and to know exactly what you want us to do. You are so good. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Larry Reed took pictures this week, and we thought during this offering time, if you would choose to give, or watch the video.
hey, kids, before you go, make sure you buy, give a, a, a pile drive, a, 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 a hug huddle to Miss Jennifer right there because she did an amazing job this week. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Hey, it's been a fun week for me. One of my favorite things, look at this screen right here. One of my favorite things this week was to see my 12-year-old. Uh, she was the, uh, the soccer coach, and I got to stand in the shadows of my, uh, my daughter. So here's a couple pictures of that. I got to stand in the, do in the shadows of my, my daughter right there. She's a 12-year-old. She was the coach. I got to be her assistant this week. And that was a good growing up moment for me as, as a dad, right? We, we have these moments where we grow up and we see just the opportunities of our students or our kids starting to lead us as adults sometimes. And, and that was an amazing thing. My daughter, she's 12. She's a Gen Zer. Uh, uh, anybody here else in the room a Gen Zer that you know of? Yeah, you are not. You are way too old to be a Gen Zer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so she got to take that soccer coach position. She was the one that was leading that. It also made my heart happy. It was, it was fun to watch my dad. He was actually helping in the karate area. My, my dad and my mom was at the registration table. They are both baby boomers. Anybody else in the room a baby boomer that you know of? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, baby boomers. We're well done. <laughs> Well done. Yeah, thanks, Mom. You got that riled up. That's, that's good. You need to get them riled up. Uh, it was also fun to watch my six-year-old. Uh, she was in the, um, where was my six-year-old? She was in the dance and cheer, right? Yeah, she was in the dance and cheer, and she was having a great time. She's Generation Alpha. All of the Generation Alphas just left the room. They all went into their own kids' room over there. Last week, we were talking about what it looks like to be the, the body of Christ or, or the local church. And we talked about how we as the local church, we, we have different strengths and we have different pieces and we have, have different gifts that we've been giving. And this is important for the local church to be able to move forward. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, this is the Apostle Paul. He's telling us what it means to be the local church. And what he says is this. He says, all of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. You see, what the Apostle Paul is telling us is not only do we have gifts and strengths and we're all working together as the body of Christ, but what it's also telling us, what I believe Paul Paul is also telling us is that all generations matter with inside of the local church. In my family, we have baby boomers. In my family, we have a Gen Xer. In my family, we have a old millennial. In my family, we have a Gen Zer. And in my family, we have a Generation Alpha. Five different generations involved in my family, also involved in the church here. One of my favorite things as we continue to look at what it means to be the local church is this. We had middle school leaders, middle school, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders who were leading kids in their huddle groups who were coaches. It was amazing to see those middle school kids leading it was amazing to see teenagers serving. As I, as I was standing in the, uh, the main room and I kept looking over in this corner, I saw teenagers who were helping students and helping kids every single night of the week as we had mega sports camp. It was amazing to me to see the young adults coaching. It was amazing to me to see the adults who were loving and who were sweating all week long, right? We had generation after generation after generation after generation, this entire week within the body of Christ working together. And so let's just take a moment. I've, I've been throwing some of these words around here, but let's just take a moment and look at what the different generations are. And as I yell out or talk about your generation, you kind of give a little cheer because I want to hear where the generations are at in this room. The greatest generation born 1901 to 1927. Anybody in the room? No? Oh, that would have been awesome, right? Yeah. The silent generation, 93 to 77 year old, years old. A couple. They're, they're being silent, yep. <laughs> Baby boomers, 1946 to 1964. Nice, nice. Generation X, 57 to 42 years old. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 woo. That's me. Uh, it's been millennials. There's actually, there's actually the old millennials and the new millennials, but for this slide, I just threw them all together. So 34 to 41 years old. Yeah, good, good. Generation Z, 26 to 12 years old. <laughs> Generation Alpha, they're the 11 years old, and some of them haven't even been born yet. Oh, we have one, yay! <laughs> That's awesome, I love it, I love it. 
I love it. I, like I said, in my, gener- in my family, we have my parents who are, are the, uh, the baby boomers, and we work all the way down to Generation Alpha. And what I'm learning with this is I, is I have a, a, almost a teenager now and, and a six-year-old. What I'm learning in this and, and, and interacting with my parents, interacting with my, my in-laws, what I'm learning with this is because we have these five different generations, we have different styles, right? We have different clothing styles. Uh, I probably will not wear what my daughter wears ever. Mostly because I can't afford what she wears because her shorts have all those little holes and everything in them and we're paying more for those and it's crazy. I just sounded like an old person right then, didn't I? <laughs> you hoodlums! We have, right? We have different speeches. Thinking about what my kids, it's lit dog compared to that's cool. Like we have different speeches and styles of speeches. We have different attitudes. We have different preferences. We have different ways of learning. In my family, we have have different methods of how we've grown up and what we've grown up with. In my family, uh, my kids are really good with cell phones, and my mom's not. (laughs) Right? Here's a fun fact for you. Some of the Gen Zers or the the older Gen Zers or the younger Gen Zers, uh, most of them or all of them have probably always had technology. They, they can't remember a time when they haven't had a, a computer inside of their pocket. And because of that, what I'm learning is that because they have a computer in their pocket there with all of these social media groups, all of them are fully com- connected with the entire world. But statistics show me that they're probably the most disconnected with the relationships of all generations. How does that as the body of Christ, how is that as, as the church journey ministries, this local church, how do we interact with Gen Zers who are technology-based and my parents who don't know technology? How does, this, how does this work? What does this look like for us? How do we be the body of Christ? Here's some more interesting facts. This is from pewresearch.com. It says this, the evangelical, so they've talked to adults, and in the evangelical Christian, Christian age groups, this is where we see a breakdown. Silent generation, there was 14% of all adults were probably evangelical Christian. 35% of the baby boomers, 28% of the generation X, 12% older millennials, 11% younger millennials. In Pew, Pew Research, they tell us that the unaffiliated group, so these are adults that are unaffiliated with any religion, 22% of the silent generation, 5% of the baby boomers, of Generation X, 22% of older millennials, 22% of younger millennials. These statistics, and and you can see there's, that's just the evangelical Christians and the unaffiliated. I didn't put in all of the other different types of religions that people are following. What happened between the silent generation and the baby boomers for that evangelical Christian number to grow that quickly? What happened from the baby boomers into the young millennials for that evangelical Christianity movement relationship with Jesus Christ to see where we're at today? What, what happened there? I was talking with, actually it was Mark Jones earlier today, and, and, and we were just kind of discussing this and talking about this, and some of the biggest things that came to mind quickly, we took prayer out of six schools. We started not teaching the Bible we started sports, we started, started activities, and wow, well, what we're seeing is from those, we're seeing the statistics of, of what took place inside of our families from the different generations being involved inside of the church. There was a, a U.S. swimmer, this was recently, her name was Anita Alvarez, she was participating in this world championship swimming, uh, um, what's it called? It's when they do like the ballet stuff in the swimming pool. Synchronized swimming, thanks. She was doing synchronized swimming in Budapest in this world championship. And her coach noticed that she started slowly sinking to the bottom of the pool. And so her coach, Andrea Fruentes, she scanned the pool deck and she jumped in before the lifeguards could jump in. She, in that split second moment, she jumped in and she rescued her swimmer, Anita. Chris Davis, he, he actually said this about the incident. This was put on Facebook by 
Chris Davis. He said, this image right here that you see, this image reminds me of the importance of coaching and mentoring. This coach had the ability to recognize when Anita was under longer than she normally is. The coach had the desire to help. The coach had the ability to help. This coach acted while others were still watching on the sideline. We have way too many young leaders drowning right now, especially in our church. I personally watch many friends walk away, and unfortunately, a couple even took their own lives due to the pressure that comes from navigating church leadership. Every Paul needs a Timothy, and every Timothy needs a Paul. If you're a young person that does not have a mentor, find one now. If you're a seasoned vet that does not have a mentee, find one now. When one of us drowns, we all suffer. Kind of powerful words, right? Uh, 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 update, Anita uh, Alvarez, is the swimmer. She's, she's good. She was checked out by the medical team there. She's good. Actually, what I was reading is this happens often because they try to control their breathing so much during these competitions that they literally pass themselves out because they're trying to go as, as much as they possibly can. So she was good, but her coach recognized when she was in trouble. As we start looking at what the generations mean with inside of our church, as we start looking at what the generations mean inside of the local church here at Journey Ministries, I think it's so important for us to understand and to know each generation and invite each generation into the, the room. Larry Reed, he took pictures, and, and this was one of the pictures that he took multiple of these pictures. And, and this just, it, it makes my heart so happy to look at the different generations that are reaching our kids. It's the different generations coming together as the body of Christ and then in being involved in these faith-based conversations. And purple people, I, I would challenge you that, that not only would we do this during mega sports camp, but we would do this every single day of the week as Christ followers that we would be the church, not just here inside of the school building or, or when we're doing a special event, but we would be the church of generations every single day of the week. Timothy was a young man who began to travel with the Apostle Paul. He, and, and I can imagine that, that Timothy probably had the soccer yellow jersey on and the purple people, pur, pur, purple Paul as the coach was leading Timothy through what it means to live life. And young Timothy, he needed to be humble. He needed to listen. He needed to be able to understand. He needed, he needed to be able to respond to Paul's teaching. And, and Paul, he really needed to have patience. Some of us needed to have patience this week, right? I know I need to have patience with my Gen Zer and my Generation Alpha. And so what was taking place here is Timothy, he was being humble, he was listening and being taught by the coach, Paul, and, and they needed this patience together and they needed to be able to teach together. But what happened here was this strong mentor-mentee relationship started to form. And this relationship happened, and because of this relationship, we saw that the good news has spread over all of the world. Because of this relationship with Paul and with Timothy. And this week I saw mentor and mentee relationships forming and I saw the good news of Jesus Christ being spread. What did Miss Jennifer say? 33 kids accepted Christ as their personal savior. <laughs> what? Yeah. Why did that happen? It happened because we were willing to get a little uncomfortable within the different generations. It happened because we were willing to get a little uncomfortable, a little sweaty, and a little upset maybe a little stressed out. It happened because we were being led by the Holy Spirit to be able to speak into these students and these kids' lives. And because of that, we saw children understand who Jesus Christ is. And now, church, it's our responsibility to continue to disciple them and to help them understand who Jesus is better and help them understand what it means to be more like Jesus and help them to understand who the Holy Spirit and who God the Father is and what the Trinity is all about. It's important for us to be able to speak into these kids' lives every single day of the week. You see, I, I believe that as we read through scriptures and as we see how God's heart leads, we, we see that God understands that humans were meant to be connected together. We see this example from the very beginning where Adam was given a wife, Eve. Why? Because it was not good for him to be alone. 
And so God provided. We, we saw how Jesus surrounded himself with his own personal students and how he led them and taught them and, and discipled them and, and encouraged them. We saw how Paul set up the early church as the body of Christ, that we're all using our strengths and we're all using our gifts as all generations t- come together as the body of Christ. We see this throughout scriptures. And we've been created to live within community. As Miss Holly was talking about, we live in this faith-based community as we know the local church journey ministries, but we have this broader community that we go out into and we preach the gospel to all the world. That's what the church is all about. That's what Journey Ministries is striving to be. And so as Journey Ministries, this faith-based community, we're made up of all generations and it's our goal to have all generations in the same room. And it's so important for all the generations to show up. It's so important for all generations to be present and be willing to be humble and be willing to be taught and be willing to listen and be willing to change the world because of the Holy Spirit working inside of us. It's important for all generations to be intentional, for all of us to come together. Author Josh Shipp, he said it this way, and you've heard me say this before, every kid is one caring adult away from being a success story. I fully believe that. I fully believe that if we step into these moments of these kids and these teenagers and these young adults' lives, as we step into the moments of these baby boomers and the silent generation, as we step into the Gen X generation, we're going to be intentional and we're going to see success stories happen because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Millennials and older Gen Zers, you saw the statistics of 11% and 12%. Millennials and Gen Zers, we need you. Church needs you. Journey Ministries needs you. God needs you to be intentional with your time. But somehow we've missed your generation. And and as a pastor, as your pastor, I apologize for that. We've we've missed. We've failed you. We see the statistics of what's taking place here. And because of that, we're seeing you leave the church. And I don't understand why. Other than we failed. We need you, Gen Zers. We need you, Generation Alpha. And as kids, you need to look towards those millennials and those Gen Zers to lead you and to teach you. You need to look towards those Gen Xers and those baby boomers and that silent generation to lead you and to teach you. One of my fears in the local church is this, that the Gen Zers and the Generation Alphas that these young adults and these teenagers who are leading us today won't find wisdom from the millennials or the Gen Zers. They won't find wisdom from the Gen Xers. They won't find wisdom from the baby boomers or the silent generation. My fear is that what they're doing is they're turning to their computer in their pocket and they're looking up spiritual answers rather than coming to us. Part of that's our fault. Why? Because we're not present. Why? Because we're not intentional. Why? Because we're not specifically seeking out this younger generation to pour into spiritual matters and to help them understand what it means to love God and to love people. There's a great example in the scriptures of Moses and and Joshua. Exodus chapter 18, verse 13. Let's turn there. If you have your Bibles, let's look at this real quick. It says this, the next day Moses took his seat to hear the people's disputes against each other. They waited before him from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, what are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do all of this alone while everyone stands around you from morning till evening? Verse 15, Moses replied, because the people come to me and get a ruling from God. When a dispute arises, they come to me, and I am the one who settles the cases between the quarreling parties. I inform the people of God's decrees and give them this instruction. This is not good, Moses' father-in-law exclaimed. You're going to wear yourself out, and the people too. This job is too heavy of a burden for you to handle all of this by yourself. You see what's taking place here is, is the, a lot of people were wandering through the desert. And Moses was trying to help through all of these situations. And finally, Moses' father-in-law, a different generation, Jethro, comes into Moses and he speaks truth into Moses and says, Listen, you're burning yourself out. You're going to get exhausted. You're going to get tired. There's, you're not sharing the load. We're not being the church. And so Moses listened to to Jethro. 
And Jethro continues to encourage and to teach and to develop Moses and his leadership skills. And finally, Jethro takes off. He goes back home, and Moses is here now leading his, his people. And, and soon he starts to pick different people to help lead this. He starts to find different people that he's going to pour into and mentor and, and encourage. And Joshua, he's one of the young leaders that, that Moses picks. And he says, Joshua, I'm going to pour into you. I'm going to help you understand what it means to lead. I'm going to intentionally develop you, Joshua. Exodus chapter 24, verse 13. So Moses and his assistant Joshua set out, and Moses climbed up the mountain of God. You see what was taking place here is Moses intentionally took Joshua up the mountain where, where, where Moses was receiving those Ten Commandments. Joshua was there. He was understanding, he was seeing, he was checking out to see what it meant to follow God with all of his heart, to listen to God. And Joshua was there to hear from Moses and to see what Moses was doing. Exodus chapter 32, verse 19. When they came near the camp, Moses saw the calf and the, dance, and the dancing, and he burned with anger. He threw the stone tablets to the ground, smashing them at the foot of the mountain. You see, Joshua, he saw Moses respond in righteous anger. Moses was upset with the church. He was upset with the way Christ followers, or, or this time God followers, were responding. And Joshua was able to see how Moses responded to the people. <coughs> Exodus 33, 11. Will you bring me my drink, please? Exodus thirty three eleven. Inside the tent meeting. Thank you. Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Afterwards, Moses would return to the camp. But the young man who assisted him, Joshua, son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. You see, what was taking place here is Moses was teaching Joshua what it meant to have a personal quiet time with God. In this moment, Moses was having a, a holy communion with God, and Joshua was outside of the tent understanding and seeing and knowing exactly what was going on. Joshua was being mentored by Moses. And as Moses mentored Joshua, he brought him along and he, he taught him and, and he showed him. Joshua was humble and he was ready to, to learn. And Moses was, was patient and he was ready to teach. And throughout all these moments of, of critical moments, Moses, he taught Joshua and he said, here's what it means to pass on truth to the next generation. I learned from my father-in-law, Jethro, and now I'm taking it and I'm teaching you, Joshua, what it means to go out into all of the world and to lead and to teach and to be this Christ follower, this God follower at this moment, to, to understand what it means to be a part of this church. At 120 years old, Moses died. And as I read that and I looked at that, I, I realized we really have no excuse. 120 years old when Moses died. We don't have an excuse. And, and what, the other thing that I thought of is ministry doesn't have a retirement age. If you're a Christ follower, you continue to minister every single day of the week. Up until you're dead. This generation needs you. My six-year-old and my 12-year-old need you millennials and Gen Zers, the old Gen Zers. I need you and your wisdom. I need you to teach me and to, to help me, and you have no excuse. Ministry doesn't have a retirement age. Let's continue to see what happens to Joshua. Judges chapter 2, verse 8. Joshua, son of Nun. The servant of the Lord died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land he had been located at Timoneth, Sarah, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gosh. You see, what was happening here is Joshua, Moses has died, 120 years old. Joshua now, 110 years old, has died. He's grew, grow, grown up in this, this gen, uh, generations. He's been taught He's understanding what it means to lead, and now he's leading a different generation. And what we see here is that, sadly, Joshua's leadership is very different compared to Moses's. Judges chapter 2, verse 10. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. But why is there such a contrast with how Joshua led and how Moses led. I think it's this. I could not find any type of record with Joshua investing into anyone else. 
I couldn't find where Joshua was in intentionally developing other leaders. You see, Moses, through Jethro and into Moses, they had this high priority to empower the young leaders, to help them understand what it means to follow and to do, to be the church. Unfortunately, Jethro, Joshua didn't. He didn't take this intentionality. He didn't lead well. Church, I, I'm seeing as I study through generations, and I'm seeing as I look at the church and study the church, I'm seeing that we're having a fast decline in the younger generations that love God and fear the Lord. I'm seeing that our godly wisdom and our faith is not being intentionally passed on to our gen younger generations. You saw the statistics. 11 and 12% of millennials who faithfully follow God. The Apostle Paul, he wrote it this way in, in his letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Body of Christ, all generations together. It's our responsibility to learn the things that we've been taught and to teach. It's our responsibility as all generations, as the body of Christ, within our strengths, to help others understand the wisdom that comes from trusting in Christ Jesus. How do we do this? Journey ministers, how do we do this? I think it's exactly what we did this last week. We open up scriptures, 2 Timothy 5, 7. We helped kids and teenagers and young adults and, and whatever generation you're a part of, we, we take those scriptures and we help them understand what it means. And we help that person to apply it to their heart, to their life. And we help lead that person into the gospel into the entire world. What does this look like, Journey Ministries? It looks like Miss Jennifer, as she has 90-something kids here on a Sunday or on a, a mega sports camp week. It looks like having 40-plus middle school kids running around the Journey Center on a Thursday. It looks like 20-something high school kids running around on a Sunday night. And it looks like you getting involved in that. It looks like those resources that are out on the table where the journey ministry banner is and you can pick those up and you can read through the book of Psalms with your students or with your kids or with your family. They're out there. Pick them up. It's a resource that Miss Jennifer made just for you. It looks like us as the generations teaching wisdom through action. It looks like us as all generations intentionally coming alongside of somebody. It looks like us being the church every day of the week. Will you pray with me? God, I'm so thankful for who you are. And Father, as I look around this room and I think of those that are watching online, participating there, I think about the wisdom. I think about the strengths. Father, it breaks my heart to see these generations that are falling away from you. These generations who are misunderstanding your scriptures. These generations that are not being taught to fear the Lord. These generations that are not being taught what it means to have agape love through Jesus Christ hanging on that cross perfect God, perfect human, being a sacrifice for our sins. It's these younger generations that are going to the computer in their pocket so they can understand spiritual matters. Father, help us to do this better. Holy Spirit, speak to us as generations. Help us to pass down 
the faith that we've been taught, the, the teachings that we've been taught, so that the next generation will understand what it means to love you and to love people better. So the next generation will be able to teach their kids and their grandkids. God, this is important. You've created us for community. You've set up the local church and the global church. And you've instructed us to do things in an order. You've developed us to be the body of Christ, to use our strengths and our gifts only given by the Holy Spirit so that others will understand who Jesus is and the saving power behind that. God, help us to draw closer to you as individuals so that we're ready for an answer, so we're ready to teach. Help us, Father, to be Moses, to pour into the next generation. Help us, Father, to be a Jethro, to encourage and to rebuke and to guide. Father, help us to be like Joshua, to be held accountable and to see and understand what it means to faithfully serve you. Father, help us to go into all of the world and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Give us courage to stand up when others are kneeling. Give us courage to use our voice in a loving, practical way that is driven by the Holy Spirit, but to do it in such a bold way that people stop and listen. Father, I see what's happening in the world around me. There are hurts and there are pains, but you are God and you sit on your throne. You are the creator of heaven and earth and nothing that is taking place catches you off guard or surprises you. You are full authority. So God, as we continue on with worship through song, be pleased, be honored, and be praised. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Will you stand with us and sing, please?